All right, we're going to find out sooner than that what they have in Leatu Latu, 15th overall pick, regarded as one of the top pass rushers in the draft, the first defensive player taken. That's the good news. Hey, Leatu Latu, you're going to be the first defensive player taken in the draft. All right, what am I, third, Great. fourth? <laughs> no, 15th. Sorry, you're number 15. And that's what finally started. It went 15, 16, 17. There were four in five picks after Latu. But, they, you know, Latu's a guy – on the edge, not not a big body, but one of those guys get around the edge, has the bend, has the leverage, get to the quarterback. You need to be in the AFC South now with Trevor Lawrence and Will Levis and C.J. Stroud, you better be able to get to the quarterback. And, and Latu was interesting because last night, once he got drafted, uh, Be- Coach Belichick, he had all of these breakdowns, and it was so funny watching it last night because it brought all of the former players that played for him back to our team meetings because – You know, usually the draft night is the guy gets drafted. We watch like five or six highlight plays and maybe somebody mentions one thing they could do better. Coach Belichick had like two or three good plays. And then he had these plays where it was like, this is what the guy can do and get better. And what I thought was interesting is Latu gets drafted and they keep calling him edge and Bill jumps on. He goes, what the, what the hell is an edge? What is an edge with the edge of what? Well, why do you guys keep calling these players edges? He was like, this guy can play defensive end. He said, but he also plays defensive tackle, and he comes on and he shows this guy down in what we call the three technique. He's on the edge of the the offensive tackle, and he's taking on guards. He's holding his ground. He's throwing guys out of the way, and he can play the run too. And I think that's one of the key things is this guy can play everywhere. And then you put him next to Buckner, and – you know, they can maybe switch. They can do different things up front. But I think his ability to get after the passer, which you just said, and the ability not to just get after the passer on the edge, but also in their scheme, using them different places. That's why Michael Bennett was such a problem when he was a player was he can rush you from the edge. He can rush you inside at three technique. And it's the same thing when we watch Chris Jones in Kansas City and Aaron Donald before he retired this year uh, for the Rams is these guys have great versatility. And that's some of my favorite players on the defensive line. Because if you're going to put a high pick or you're going to pay a guy a lot of money, you want that there's nothing a team can do to kind of make this guy irrelevant in the game. And when you watch these guys that can line up inside and beat guards with quickness, but also if you're going to try to slide to them and the guard and center is going to take them away, then you're going to just line them up on the edge. And now when you're on the edge, you're going to say, hey, you either use that tight end and we take him out of the game to help or the running back. So I think Latu is going to be able to be a dangerous player for Indianapolis and it should help them out a lot. Hey, you mentioned Michael Bennett. It gives me flashbacks to Super Bowl 49 when Belichick knew he was the guy that could screw oh. up everything. And he had that element, the F up the play, as Sim said. We talked about it every day, habit. that whole week. Yep. <laughs> the uh, Seahawks, the team that, that had Michael Bennett in Super Bowl 49, had to have been thrilled to have Byron Murphy fall to them. That's a guy Sims loves. We met him at the scout, scouting combine. He's huge. He said, I came out swole. And he's one of those guys that you put in the interior of the defensive line who just will create havoc. Aaron Donald is gone. Somebody's got to be the heir to that throne. And not that, you know, too early to compare Murphy to Aaron Donald, but he's got the potential to be that guy that's just kind of throwing bodies everywhere and keeping an offense from doing whatever it's trying to do. Listen, this was the same team we watched when they played against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we were just watching – you know, whether it was Jalen Warren or it was Najee Harris, they were just having these runs where they're running over people, running through people. It was just hand the ball off and go. So, yeah, when you put a guy like Byron Murphy in the middle of your defense and he's able to just take other grown men and make them look like little boys, you have to be excited about that. And I think especially, you know, we keep talking about all these offensive-minded coaches are going to be there for years. You get Mike McDonald to go down there and he's in Seattle now. He wants a good defense. And I think this Seattle culture, even though Sherman and Camp Chancellor are not fans of taking down some of the Legion of Boom and some of the things they were able to do, taking those pictures and stuff down, I think this shows that McDonald's invested in bringing that culture a little bit back to Seattle, having a great defense, going out there winning games because you're punching people in the mouth. And I think when you're able to bring that mentality in and you're going to have your first pick under your era, and you bring a guy like Byron Murphy in, it sets the tone for the team. It allows them to say, all right, we're going to have a guy in here that's going to be an animal. And, you know, last year they had a chance to to get uh, Jalen Carter, and they did it. He goes to Philly, and I know 
his season didn't end as well as it, it started with uh, his ability and just moving people around. But I think they said, you know what, we're going to take this guy that we can set in the middle of our defense and it could be a problem for years. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.